Hey everybody, Dietrich Williams, The Navigator, here to take you from where you are to where you wanna be, and welcome to another edition of Info On The Go, continuing our discussion on probate. So last time I said I was going to discuss the differences between limited authority and full authority probates. So let's just kind of back up a sec and go over this a little bit more in detail, just a little. Um, so when somebody passes away, their heirs are going to go to the court, if it's not in the trust, um, and they're going to ask the judge to open up a probate case. This is called a petition of probate. And that is just to say, here's what we want, judge. We want to put, let's say, their will inside of the probate and anything else they want inside there. They're going to say, open up the case. Let's do it with this. The judge is going to say, great. In five to six weeks, maybe five to seven weeks, we're going to have our first hearing to essentially find out who wants to be the executor or administrator, a.k.a. The personal representative so they show up in court that day and the judge says okay the personal representative is going to be Jane Doe they're going to issue what are called letters and orders so there's essentially two types of letters letters testamentary when there's a will and letters of administration when there's no will the letters are going to give authority for the PR to conduct business on behalf of the estate right the orders are essentially just assigning who is going to be the authorized representative or personal representative of the estate. Very important, right? So if on the letters it says full authority, the PR has the, 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 the right to sell without the court being involved in it. However, if it's limited authority, there's a couple of different things that wind up happening. And I'm going to keep this really basic. So. A, per, a probate referee will come out, they'll take a look at the property and they'll give it an appraised value. Anyone who wants to submit an offer on that property in order for it to get accepted, it has to be, it has to fall within 90% of that appraised value, right? So let's just say the property appraised at 500,000, <clears> excuse me, the winning offer that came in was 500,000, no contingencies in 10,000, or let's just say, 10% of the, uh, the purchase price was put into escrow. So they win. The PR and the attorney go back to the judge and they say, hey judge, we have an accepted offer. The judge takes a look, they say, okay, this is great. I'm going to set a court confirmation date to get this transaction off to, to the races. <clears throat> now on that date, the person or persons who wrote the offer will show up in court but so will anybody else who's interested in the property. They will show up to court. And what happens is there will be a bidding, almost like an auction, right? So the 500,000 is the baseline. Everybody else who falls in, that next bid has to fall in line with what's called the overbid amount. And that's the purchase price. Take that, you're gonna take the first $10,000 of that and take 10% of that. And then the remaining balance of that, you're gonna take 5% of that. Add all those numbers together, that is going to be your next overbid amount. So in this case, it's gonna be $525,500. Pretty tricky math. Here's a more simplistic way to do it. Take the purchase price, multiply it by 5%, and then add another $500. The math works out just the same, but just so that you know the actual definition of how the overbid amount works, it's 10% of the first $10,000 and then 5% of the remaining balance of whatever the purchase price is, right? Again, important to remember because if you're a buyer putting in an offer on a probate, uh, you may think, I got it, but you gotta go to court. And if anybody else shows up, you're bidding against them. If no one shows up, boom, you get the property. Very basic, all right? So we're gonna continue this discussions on probates, but if you like this information, or if you just wanna see past episodes of Info On The Go, where I'm just sharing tons of information out there for you, click the subscribe button, go view those past videos, and educate yourselves, all right? Once again, I'm Dietrich Williams, The Navigator, and I will see you guys next time.